Good afternoon again and welcome to United TV for our Management Friday session. Uh, my name is Kamal Arkan. Today is October 25th, 2024. Uh, today's episode will have the privilege of uh, speaking with Dr. Isaac Erdogan, uh, who is an expert in bariatric surgery, a uh, patient advocate of patient centers uh, care in the field of uh, weight loss surgery. As more people turn into bariatric surgery for a solution to manage uh, obesity and morbid obesity, uh, we also would like to kind of focus on uh, patient perspective as well as the life expectancy and how these are all related to each other and how bariatric surgery can help. Uh, now uh, I have Dr. Erdogan with me and I'm going to uh, start the session. Dr. Erdogan, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Kamal. It's great to be back on yet another session. I love the setting. It keeps getting better. Good, good. Uh, that's good to hear. So uh, we are going to uh, discuss the uh, life expectancy. We covered this a uh, couple other times. Um, the issue that we see, um, uh, the understanding of uh, what bariatric surgery does and what changes needs to happen, what kind of like everyone needs to do and people with morbid obesity has to do. And then there's this group of um, people from both sides, they must do to maintain where they are. And uh, we discuss all the benefits and everything, but I think life expectancy is a different perspective uh, of uh, the, the bariatric surgery outcome. So uh, what do we have to say? Absolutely, there? absolutely. That is really a key point, uh, right? When we ask, uh, does bariatric surgery make a difference, right? Uh, of course, we've talked many times on how important changes and improvement in quality of life occur after bariatric surgery. Just because the physical weight of the weight itself uh, is a huge burden on the patient's daily life. And with that gone, quality of life improves. But then the other question we have to say is, does that really make any difference in terms of how long the patient is going to live? And intuitively, we knew that difference was there, that uh, bariatric surgery does extend one's life, right? But then we needed studies, we needed the data, and the data has come along. Uh, very, very prestigious peer-reviewed journals have come with article after article showing that in very many studies, it has been conclusively shows that, showed that bariatric surgery does indeed extend one's life, right? So you've got the New England Journal of Medicine, you've got the Journal of the American Medical Association, you've got Nature, right? Very, very prestigious journal. All of them have carried really articles showing this very important data that has shown indeed that if you compare people who suffer from morbid obesity uh, and you put side by side those who have bariatric surgery to address morbid obesity and those who have the usual care of uh, diet and exercise, you can see that the patients who've had bariatric surgery actually have a longer lifespan. Right, And this is despite the fact that they are undergoing a procedure that is a surgical procedure. And we talk about issues uh, of potential complications, even serious complications of bariatric surgery. But really, the, this result, this extended life uh, expectancy after bariatric surgery is the results of two very important things, right? One is the fact that by removing uh, weight, we are also removing many of the complications of obesity that have been known to be the very important reasons for mortality in our country. I'm talking about heart disease, I'm talking about high blood pressure, I'm talking about stroke, I'm talking about cancer, I'm talking about diabetes, as we will see in a moment. But the flip side of that coin is that we have made bariatric surgery extremely safe as well, right? If you look over the last 30, 40 years, there have been massive improvements in the quality of bariatric surgery and in the outcome. And if you look at a very important measure, which is what we call the 30-day mortality rate of bariatric surgery, we have shown clearly that that has gone down tremendously. So that very uh, major bariatric procedures like gastric bypass, like the sleep gastrectomy, nowadays actually are as safe as procedures like or bladder surgery, or hysterectomy, or uh, knee replacement surgery. So reducing the risks of bariatric surgery 
And if you link that with the benefits of weight loss in terms of the health of the person, then you can see why we are seeing such important results in terms of the life expectancy. And then, as I said, intuitively, we understand that. I was actually just looking at the leading causes of mortality in our country. If you look, for instance, there is data from 2022. The number one cause of mortality in 2022 was heart disease at 700,000 people dying. The number two cause was cancer at 600,000. The number three was accidents. But then after that, there is COVID. After that, there is stroke. There is chronic lung disease. There is Alzheimer's. And then there is diabetes. Now, if you take out accidents, all the other reasons mm -hmm. for major mortality that have been listed here, carrying numbers like 700,000 or 100,000 at the smallest, all these are related to mortality. Even cancer now, right? We used to think that the number one cause of cancer, you know, lung cancer being the number one, was smoking. But we are actually on a path now for obesity to take or to overtake smoking as a number one cause of cancer, right? So that's where we are. So if you're reducing obesity, you're also reducing the complications of obesity, including heart disease, including stroke, including diabetes, and now we know also cancers are included in that category. So it is really, we have the data, we've shown it conclusively that there is a reduction in mortality once you undergo bariatric surgery and life expectancy is extended, but also intuitively we've known it because once we get rid of obesity, we also get rid of those important causes of early death that I just mentioned. So I was actually uh, just trying to bring something up um, because as uh, you know, one of these uh, things with us when we are um, uh, getting ready, some of the things that we are, you know, powering these um, uh, as um, uh, as we do it every day. It's like to me, it's like well, it's, it's there's no uh, other uh, alternatives. It's just this is what needs to happen and how it needs to happen. And um, so if I can bring this up, um, the problem of uh, how many people we have heard in the last four months uh, in their 50s, they just dropped that, right? And there are a couple of people that I know from the family, uh, extended family, some uh, people we know in public uh, and some people in this community here. Mm -hmm. And the immediate uh, question that I ask is, where do they have morbid obesity? And uh, well, we already know, like there was uh, just recently, I'm just trying to see if I have a picture of him. Uh, that he was a singer and he just, on the, at the stage, he died. Mm -hmm. And he was morbid obese. Mm -hmm. so, with the stress and everything that this, um, you know, uh, uh, this life can give us, uh, dealing uh, with that without morbid obesity is one thing. But then with morbid obesity, we are uh, not buying our risk. So, and uh, there just just recently there's someone else who had the same problem, and they, then you know that there is a. a direct correlation with the uh, quality of life, but also life expectancy. Um, now, uh, is, would this be a fair question if I were to ask you, Dr. Gao, um, someone who is, uh, you know, dying from morbid obesity, who has hypertension and other issues, if the same person, they may still have other comorbidities, but if they didn't have morbid obesity, chance of them uh, overcoming that attack, that this, if it's a heart attack or whatever that happened to them, if we can compare those to Absolutely. what are the chances of the other person living or, uh, in, the, in that case? No question, no question. So the person that is suffering from morbid obesity has huge disadvantages, not only in terms of having those illnesses that we talked about, but also in terms of their ability to overcome medical problems. I mean, the, one of the ones that we've talked about, and it was interestingly that I saw it in my list, is COVID, for instance, right, Kamal? Mm -hmm. COVID, 
the mortality was disproportionately higher in people who were suffering exactly. from obesity. And that tells us one thing, and that our body is so diseased that its own ability to heal and overcome problems is reduced. So certainly, if you have somebody, if you have two people who are having a major illness and one person has morbid obesity and the other person doesn't, yes, clearly the person with morbid obesity is likely to have way more complications. Let me give you another simple example. If people are going for a procedure like knee replacement surgery, for instance, or hernia repair, right? Their risk of problems with anesthesia is really related to their uh, weight profile. The person with morbid obesity is clearly going to be classified as somebody much higher risk for potential complications compared to the person who doesn't have that. Both of them could have high blood pressure. Both of them could be uh, uh, struggling with uh, type 2 diabetes. And yet the person with the higher body mass index will have way more disadvantages when it comes to overcoming complications of that surgery. So I think that is a reasonable question, the one that you presented. And it tells us how much of a burden obesity is for a person's health. And that's why it's so critical to address it when you look at a person's overall health profile. So no longer can we just accept the fact that somebody goes to their primary care doctor, sit in front of their doctor for their annual physical mm -hmm. and ignore completely the weight of that person if that person is suffering from morbid obesity. That has to be addressed, you know? And there were hangups in the past because uh, we ourselves as healthcare providers were reluctant to address this issue for many years. And it was very common for patients to go year after year to their doctor and their body mass index continuing to increase and no discussion would be undertaken about the weight of the person, right? But that is changing, thank God. We are seeing that this, there is really a much bigger awareness, not only, of course, among the health care providers, but also among patients that now weight no, is not an issue of appearance. It's not an issue of inconvenience. It's a health problem. It's a medical problem. It's a disease, and that is how it has to be tackled, essentially. And I find one of the videos, so if I can just bring it up. So uh, clearly, uh, you know, the guy was struggling, but mm -hmm. then, you know, with these uh, drugs and alcohol and other stuff, uh, they're always uh, part of their problem. In terms of different uh, bariatric surgery types, would that have any impact on the life expectancy? So that's an important point, Kamal. And I do want to add to that one other thing you mentioned earlier on, the patient's perspective. Right. So if the patient is a younger patient compared to somebody who may be, for instance, on the older side, right, patient who's, let's say, 65 years old compared to a patient who's 30 years old, mm -hmm. a patient who's undergoing a, a sleeve gastrectomy compared to a person who is undergoing gastric bypass, would that be, make a difference? And it is legitimate for us to look into this. And key, clearly what we're looking at is what is the risk of the surgery itself, mm -hmm. right? That has to be taken into consideration when we're looking at life expectancy. Well, surgery, of course, any type of surgery, particularly surgery that requires general anesthesia, does carry a risk, right? But for bariatric surgery, that risk, the risk of 30-day mortality has been reduced considerably. Now, if you look at gastric bypass and gastric sleeve, there is a very small but clear difference. That mm -hmm. There is a, a higher risk with gastric bypass compared with the gastrectomy. Clearly, these are two different procedures in terms of how they are performed. There is more complexity with gastric bypass. And also, even when you look at living with gastric bypass as opposed to living with the gastric sleeve, the implications of gastric bypass lead to a situation where you could potentially have more problems in the future. And we talked about this in our sessions when we were looking at the difference between the two procedures, right? The major difference between gastric sleeve and gastric bypass is that with gastric bypass, there is rerouting of the intestine. And there is a new connection that is made between the intestine and the stomach in the case of the gastric bypass. That by itself does carry implications long term. Now, 
does that increase the risk of death, you know, after the first year, after the first few years? It is possible because there are specific complications related to gastric bypass that you don't see with the gastric mm -hmm. sleep. One of them, for instance, is bowel blockage. Bowel blockage can occur with gastric bypass way more readily than with the gastric sleep. And if the person is not getting medical care very, very quickly, you know, potentially serious or life-threatening complications and situations can occur in the gastric bypass situation, right? So there are clearly differences between the procedures, but by and large, when you look at bariatric surgery and its safety profile nowadays, we can say that the safety profile of these procedures by and large is comparable to very safe procedures mm -hmm. that we perform all the time, like uh, gallbladder surgery, as I said, or knee replacement surgery, which is a procedure that we perform on our seniors very, very routinely, right? The other thing that you have to consider, of course, is this, every individual is different, right? And that is why you and I, in these sessions, we are talking about broad issues. We're never really looking and advising a particular patient about what they should be doing. We always specify that each patient is unique and their medical care is best served when they have a one-to-one -one consultation sure. with a bariatric surgeon. Clearly, the bariatric surgeon will be looking at many factors before advising the patient at what procedure may be best for them and what is the procedure that will likely result in less problems, in much better improvement of the complications of obesity, and therefore a longer and better quality of life as well. These are important issues, right? So, for instance, uh, Clearly, I made a big contrast before between a person who may be 30 years old and a person who may be, let's say, 68 years old. Both of them could be suffering from morbid obesity, mm -hmm. but clearly the complications of obesity will have gotten much more chronic in the person who is older, right? And the resilience also in terms of the body healing, in terms of the body withstanding potential complication of the surgery are better in the person who is young compared to the person who is older essentially, but even with those factors, we can uh, really assert come out that the studies that we have seen, which included patients of different age, obviously female and male, have shown that if you have a person with morbid obesity, the chances for them living longer are much better if they have bariatric surgery with the resolution of morbid obesity and the complications of obesity, including uh, major causes of mortality in our country, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, and metabolic problems like type 2 diabetes. So, Dr. Gao, one of the other uh, problems that we still see is uh, how the medical uh, community actually is treating uh, morbid obesity. So, um, knowing this, um, uh, can we actually, do you see a way of uh, patient-centric care uh, for uh, bariatric treatment and uh, how that would impact uh, the long-term status of the quality of life and maybe being in United Medical ACO, uh, that, uh, that also gives us certain advantages, us being very clinically integrated with our bariatric program. But overall, if you can kind of talk about that. Absolutely. Actually, I've been uh, very privileged to be part of the United Medical ACO uh, and participate, uh, you know, at the board level and also at the ACO level. And one of the things that is really uh, clearly putting United Medical ACO uh, really ahead uh, of many other organizations is its outlook in terms of what really matters to uh, benefit a population from a health point of view. And I can see, for instance, that United Medical ACO has placed obesity pretty much at the center of the things that need to be addressed within its population. So it is something that is discussed all the time among the providers, right? For instance, the simple insistence, for instance, of uh, uh, you know, the nursing leaders within the ACO about the importance of recording a patient's body mass index, right? as important as other vital signs, right? It tells us how important we believe the weight issue is impacting the population, right? And we're talking about a population that is within a society where the obesity rate has reached 40% right now, which means that no matter where you go, 
in the United States, you will have about 40% of the people living with obesity. So our United Medical ACO population are not uh, exempt from that. They will have a very high rate of obesity as well. And if we don't pay attention to obesity and care for it, then we are not going to be successful in terms of improving the healthcare of all our patients. So yes, this involvement of the primary care doctors, the care coordinators, the specialists, the endocrinologists is speaking a lot about how the ACO is looking at obesity as a very important factor that needs to be addressed, tackled, and uh, treated for us to improve the health of our uh, patient population. So, um, thank you for that. Uh, just kind of, uh, you know, we do have a uh, little horse in the race uh, as. Uh, I'm being the chairman of United Medical ACO, you are being the co-chair of it, but you are the president of um, our uh, bariatric program. So, and I know that we, we are not in the same situation where uh, most of the other programs are. So we are blessed from that point. And there are six uh, uh, focus points for United Medical ACO and obesity is in the same group with diabetes, hypertension, uh, CKD, the chronic kidney disease, uh, psychology, uh, psychiatry, and uh, the um, pulmonary sleep issues. So all these things are actually kind of like, if you look at the uh, certain process that patient needs to go through, uh, many of them, they need to hit those points to get clearances. Sleep apnea being one of the uh, main issues uh, for those, uh, and some in some cases maybe um, diagnosing uh, sleep apnea may not be the most uh, convenient for the patient because they have to do either home sleep study or some other ways. But they can also use their uh, Apple Watch. There's a sleep apnea module, so then they can keep their phone, uh, and it will tell them if they are going to actually go through any uh, attack during the sleep, uh, just like the way that we keep record of uh, track of. Uh, activities and other things, heart rate is another one. But what I would like to do is just share uh, this, uh, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. And I, I, I mean, I just find this image of it. So this is a, a guy who's uh, passed recently. Now it's gonna be screen, it's gonna take the whole screen. So um, let me make sure it shows up nicely on the YouTube. So. He's a 53 or 54 years old singer. And if we don't focus on the pictures, uh, so this is kind of like mm -hmm. our focus. Mm -hmm. We see a morbidly obese, mm -hmm. uh, unhealthy individual. Now, when he loses his life on stage, very young, uh, the first thing that I, I mean, the first, Thing, immediate thing that it comes to my mind is okay this is uh, morbid obesity mm -hmm. there may be other things drugs and other issues but this much weight on this individual and he, this is not his frame so we know him for so many years uh, he used to be uh, skinny he used to be uh, not so skinny and now uh, before he uh, died he was uh, going through a lot of probably uh, difficulties because of the challenge of uh, challenges of uh, Morbidos, obesity, self difficulties on the mobility and everything else that yeah. it's going to make it difficult. This individual, uh, it, it doesn't surprise us when I see the person who's just dropped that with morbid obesity. So, um, I'm going to take the picture off. So, what was your first thing that you saw on that picture? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you, what you said was uh, clearly it, right? I mean, one thing about, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of the, uh, you know, uh, morbid obesity, it's not something that you can hide, essentially. You know, it's not something that you can have HIPAA <laughs> uh, protecting, you know? I mean, it, it is, it is, you can see it clearly, essentially. And now we know better than ever that it's not a question of appearance, it's not a question of inconvenience, it is hiding major medical problems associated with it. And heart disease is at the center of it. You know, heart disease, 
uh, stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these problems are really related to the uh, ravages that obesity can do to our body. And unfortunately, those are also causes of major mortality and early death in our society, essentially. So when we're saying that, uh, you know, bariatric surgery is an effective treatment uh, for morbid obesity, we're also saying that not only it's reducing or eliminating uh, those illnesses like diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and heart disease, but we are saying also it's preventing early death, right? So the question obviously that uh, is inescapable is, uh, you know, had a person who uh, passes away prematurely and they were struggling with morbid obesity, had that person have their obesity at rest, you know, would their trajectory would have been different. And with the data that we have, you have to wonder about that. You really have to. So I'm gonna uh, share one more picture. Uh, The only reason I'm going to share this one is uh, the host of this program, the um, you're about to see, let me actually speak over that one. I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. Again, the focus is uh, from the uh, uh, from our specialty. We look at things maybe a little bit different than others. So here is another individual. Now, this guy is friends with that other guy who just passed. Mm -hmm. Now, the only reason I, I saw this one is because the one, the host, actually is a very famous uh, guy, this one. Mm -hmm. So, and he's also more with mm -hmm. But this guy, um, who's friends with that other guy that I just showed you earlier, mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was concerned about the diet. So he's, you know, it's really... Yeah. I mean, uh, like you look at the picture, I'm going to stop sharing, so then I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you. So this is our picture, right? So if this guy commits suicide, the suicide in the next four to six months, I would not be shocked. So um, it's a huge problem um, that he has uh, depression. He's, he's a singer, and he's one of the, uh, the uh, 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 he's a, um, an opera singer. So okay. he can hit the notes no one else in the world can apparently do. And there's only a few people with his level. And yet I see a very depressed individual which, which doesn't have much motivation in life. And I'm like, it's related to Mario City. So this is going to impact. So he's only 40 years old. So uh, what was your first reaction on this? Yeah, yeah, similar as well. I mean, right? I think, uh, again, uh, you know, weight is an issue that is there. You know, it's, 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 it's present, right? And uh, as a healthcare professional, you know, that's what you see is we say, okay, those could be potential medical problems that then individual could have. And we've talked about uh, mental health and obesity as well in the past. And we've seen that, for instance, uh, uh, depression is way more prevalent among morbidly obese patients than it is in the population. And that also has to do with the fact that uh, the quality of life is not so good. And uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, emotional uh, eating, stress eating can occur, which can lead to a vicious cycle. Uh, whereby, you know, you are uh, uh, emotionally feeling really uh, low and uh, you want to get rid of that and maybe reaching to foods that could be comfort foods and they are the kind of foods that really cause uh, weight gain as well. Uh, and you can see that uh, self-perpetuating uh, cycle that can make things worse as the time passes. So I have one more challenge. These are all not staged, so I'm just... Like that's why I was a little bit busy with looking for some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, here's another picture. Um, you know, yes, he's uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Um, I think he's 72, 73 years old. Mm -hmm. You may like him, you may not like him as a uh, as an individual. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it does. This guy is doing push-ups. Mm -hmm. He's fit. Um, I hope he's not doing any drugs. 
but uh, this is how he lives his life. <laughs> so, except the way he sound, um, everything else looks healthy. I mean, you heard him talking, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, look at the guy. So, like, he's uh, at, at that age, he's able to do it. Now, this may be a little bit on the extreme side. Maybe you don't need to do this, but this is the under. Part of it. Sure, sure. But obviously, as we say in other sessions also, Commander, there is a spectrum of biology also, mm -hmm. which may be more uh, uh, visible and more uh, applicable to certain individuals than others. In other words, you can see, for instance, people who may not necessarily have a struggle with obesity based on their biology. And of course, and then if they add good lifestyle, then their results are going to be excellent. On the other hand, you could see people who really work very hard, you know, in terms of reducing their eating habits and also uh, try to work out, and the, the results are very, very poor. And we see that. And that, see, that biological tendency tends to be much more present among the people who suffer from morbid obesity, suggesting that it's not just a question of willpower, there is also issues related with your own, uh, you know, with your biology, which is something that you get from your parents, essentially. So, yes, absolutely, I get it. I think people who are going to be more focused are more likely to be able to escape the ravages of obesity, but not everybody, because we know also that a key driver of obesity is not just necessarily the lifestyle, but also the genetic makeup of the Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we can talk 24-7 on this topic. So, uh, and we did cover this uh, in other sessions so many times, so they are going to be in the playlist for their own uh, topic-specific playlist. So, uh, if you want to find out more about these, uh, please feel free to watch those. Uh, and again, this is one of uh, the uh, key issues that we see time to time. And... And it's not going to go anywhere unless we make uh, drastic changes. Um, and it's not just a change, but being able to register certain things. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what do I mean by register is like comprehend and understand mm -hmm. and commit. So yes, I'm going to do this. Uh, yes, this is a problem. Uh, or put more effort to understand the problem. And once that's in place, um, life will be a lot more enjoyable. Uh, well, nothing comes for free. There's always consequences. Um, uh, we have to put uh, our commitment into our body and uh, for well-being and for better life with our loved ones and families and and doing uh, better every day with the quality of life. And hopefully, this would uh, this session was helpful for those who are looking for. Uh, different solutions uh, for their fight in Mormon City. Dr. Riga, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you. So we'll be back next week um, with another topic. Um, uh, holidays are coming. Uh, we may do one session with the holidays, but we'll see. It's not uh, decided yet. But we'll be back next week. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Bye-bye.